Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome to my home and studio at Wendy Acre Cottage. It's a hundred year old craftsman cottage where I love to paint and garden and entertain and care for all my wonderful fur babies, both those that are adopted and all the little fosters. It's also my home base for many fun adventures of the art, history, and gardening kind. Today I'm returning to my hometown, Franklin, Tennessee, and driving into Carton Plantation off Lewisburg Pike. It's between Lewisburg Pike and the Columbia Highway. And this is not how the Columbia Highway looks anymore. This is an old picture of the road that went down to Columbia where I live now. And here we are at Carnton Plantation. It's a beautiful home that was um, built in 1826 by Randall McGavick and left to his son after his death, who was John McGavick, uh, who married Carrie Winder, his cousin, from a plantation down in Thibodeau, Louisiana. That's the McGavick Cemetery. They have a headstone commemorating the enslaved persons that uh, called Carton their home. And it's more known for being a um, the largest temporary battlefield hospital during the Civil War. In fact, right now I'm showing you uh, the Confederate Cemetery um, on November 30th, 1864. Uh, the Battle of Franklin raged and I forget how many people died there but I know the Confederates were um, nearly nearly 1800 and um, the very next day the uh, Union forces moved out they evacuated leaving their dead and dying and those that could not walk and so the residents of Franklin were charged with burying over 2,500 um, bodies. And they tried to bury them best they could, keeping the uh, soldiers together with their units from the boys from their states. And they even put up little wooden um, crosses for to, to mark the burial grounds. But after 18 months or so, the crosses were rotting and uh, the McGavicks here decided to donate two acres of their farm for a Confederate cemetery. So this is the McGavick Cemetery. And many of you may have heard of the book called um, Widow of the South about Carrie McGavick. Caring for the dying and the wounded and um, moving their bodies here to uh, this cemetery and keeping the book that had the uh, identity of those who were buried here. Their farm was turned into a field hospital, but still 300 soldiers were brought into the house the, the night of the battle, um, intended to by physicians as well as the McGavick family, including their seven and nine-year-old children, if you can imagine that. Uh, more than half of those that were brought in were, um, they didn't live through the night. They were the most severely injured, and um, that's why they were brought in the house. Everybody else was uh, laid out on the grounds. Four Confederate generals died in that battle, and their bodies were laid out on the back porch. These are the markers for the, for the soldiers, and many are actually unknown. But for those who are known, um, their initials are there. Uh, sometimes you'll even find um, it marked what uh, uh, position they held in the in the military. Thought that one was interesting. It just says John. And again, they're laid out according to their state. So each state has a larger uh, memorial that. Um, recognizes the state that these that these boys are from
George Cuppet was the general gentleman who was uh, charged with moving the bodies about 18 months after the battle. He and his brother and a couple other men, four men, were the ones who who re you know who exhumed the bodies and then reinterred them here. And uh, his brother actually passed away during this um, exercise and is buried here as well. And he's the only um, non-military person buried in the Confederate cemetery. And that's Anne, um, what is her name? Anne King, I'm not sure. I think her name is Anne King and she was um, visiting her brother's grave. That was in 1895. Here we are over at my friend Kim's house. Her um, backyard backs up to Windermere, um, which is the, I think it's Carrie McGavick's mother's house that they built for her next to Carnton. But Kim's um, property backs up to Carnton and we decided to spend the day watercolor painting on her back deck. And um, due to COVID, we're sitting at two different tables, but um, we both have our watercolor sets set up. And um, I decided to paint the hay bales that are in the Windermere pasture behind her house. And I'm using a um, travel watercolor journal that is handmade paper, handmade journal, deckled edge paper. Um, it's probably my favorite watercolor um, journal. And when I travel, I'll take this journal and one watercolor set. But when I grab my bag to do local day trips, you can see how much I pack two sets of watercolors, watercolor pens, watercolor pencils, and um, a gouache set, plus brushes, pens, and pencils. There's more of the hay bales in the back. And the fall leaves, it's my favorite time of year. I love autumn. I love the hay bales. I love the turning leaves. I love that it's getting cooler, although not today. It's 80 something degrees, but it has been cooler. And then that's the finished painting. I, I may paint um, some leaves and branches in the foreground with black ink, but just not sure yet. 